Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the 21th uh, video of our lecture series. So, <clears throat> in this video, we are going to talk about a special kind of perturbation, time dependent perturbation, which is sinusoidal perturbation. So, this sinusoidal perturbation is uh, quite important uh, in uh, in all like in atomic physics and in two level system, atomic system. Uh, so, basically, all we have, so we have like whenever we use laser or something so that we can treat that as sinusoidal so <clears throat> that is why it is quite important and necessary to learn our sinusoidal uh, to 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 learn uh, about the time uh, to uh, to learn about this uh, potential which is sinusoidal perturbation type of form So <clears throat> suppose we have uh, a perturbation which is of this kind. So we have perturbative Hamiltonian, so which has the dependence of position and time. So and we can uh, separate them out. So this is our position dependent term, and we have our time dependent term, which is sinusoidal. So it can be sine or cosine. So I'm uh, right now for simplicity we are assuming just a cosine term. So what is our uh, then what will be our if we have a perturbative Hamiltonian of this kind then our H A B prime so our H A B prime will be V A B cos omega T where uh, V A B is what this H A B prime is what is it is the matrix element so H A B prime is basically we have state psi A we have our perturbative Hamiltonian and we have state psi B so this is this corresponding matrix element so V A B will be this so V A B will, will be our psi A and here we have V and psi B so, uh, like in previous case, so here we will assume that the diagonals, uh, diagonal matrix uh, elements, they will vanish because this is almost uh, always the case in practical. So we will assume the diagonal matrix elements that means H A A and H B B so they will vanish so to uh, 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 in in first order uh, what is our cb prime so we have our cb t to be i by h cut 0 to t cosine omega t prime e to the power i omega 0 t prime dt prime and we have our b v b here because we know that uh, C B T in first order is defined as uh, minus I by H cut 0 to T H A H B A prime and we will have e to the power I omega 0 T D T. So this is our uh, exponent. So we have our two state system. This is our uh, psi A and this is this have energy e a and here we have state psi b which have energy e b and uh, the the probability of, uh, of finding the system in this state is c a t squared and probability of finding the system in the upper state is c b t squared so uh, so uh, here we have assumed that initially the system is in ground state uh, 
सो ग्राउंड स्टेटमेंट्स सिस्टम इज इनिशियली इन स्टार्ट इन स्टेट शाई ए एंड देन वी अप्लाई दिस टाइम डिपेंडेंट पार्ट रेवेशन व्हिच इज अ कोसाइन व्हिच हैज अ कोसाइन कोसाइन टाइम डिपेंडेंस एंड ड्यू टू दिस वी वी वांट टू कैलकुलेट द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ट्रांजिशन दैट मींस द एटम व्हाट इज द प्रोबेबिलिटी देन दैट द एटम will transit from this state to to this this state so for that we have to first calculate cb so let us proceed so this cosine omega t this term we can write as minus i by h cut v b a 0 to t and cosine we can write as e to the power i omega 0 t Plus e to the power minus i omega t by two. So this is our cosine function, and we have e to the power i omega zero t prime, and we have integration over t prime. So it it will be i p b a by two h cut zero to t e to the power i omega zero plus omega t prime. And we have another term e to the power i omega zero minus omega t prime, and we have integration over time, so dt prime. So what will this integration give? This will give us i v a by two h cut. From first term we will get e to the power i omega zero plus omega t prime, and it will be divided by i omega 0 plus omega and we have another term so it will be i omega 0 minus omega t prime and here we will have i omega 0 minus omega and what will be the integration limit integration limit is from 0 to t so if we do the calculation we have minus v b a I will cancel out this i and this by two h cut, and if we uh, first put t uh, t dash prime, so putting this limit, we will get e to the power i omega zero plus omega t minus one by omega zero plus omega, and we will have another term e to the power i omega zero minus omega. T minus one by omega zero minus omega. So by putting limits, we found out our C B T to be this. So uh, so this is fine. So if if we do our uh, like uh, square, if we calculate the square of this term, then we will find. The corresponding transition probability at uh, up to first order at any finite time, but uh, uh, if you notice carefully that this is uh, like like little tricky or cumbersome kind of uh, thing to deal with. So uh, so like like what we can assume. So we our we what we have in our control. We have our perturbative uh, perturbative Hamiltonian. So this omega or the driving frequency that we can control. so if we restrict our attention to driving frequencies that as uh, that are very close to the transition frequency so what is transition frequency here so we know omega 0 that is eb minus ea by h cut so that is our transition so we are calling this as transition frequency now we will restrict our attention to driving frequencies so restrict that are very close to the transition frequency
सो इफ इफ यू नोटिस क्या बोली दैट द सेकेंड टर्म इन द स्क्वायर बैकेट सो दैट विल डोमिनेट बिकॉज इन द डिनोमिनेटर इन द फर्स्ट टर्म वी हैव ओमेगा जीरो प्लस ओमेगा दैट विल बी ऑलमोस्ट टू ओमेगा बट आवर डिफरेंस दैट विल बी वेरी स्मॉल सो दिस टर्म इज वेरी स्मॉल कॉम्पेयर टू ओमेगा जीरो प्लस ओमेगा सो दैट इज वाई द सेकेंड टर्म सेकेंड टर्म हेयर इट विल डोमिनेट so what are you uh, what is our assumption so our assumption is the mod value of the frequency difference that too is very le uh, less compared to omega 0 plus omega so uh, so uh, you uh, like you can be wondering uh, why we are considering this particular frequency so uh, we know that uh, if we have perturbation and at any other frequency like uh, frequency which is not close to the transition frequency then uh, then we know that there is also like very uh, negligible probability of uh, causing a transition so that is why uh, uh, this is not much a limitation this uh, like this will have much dominate effect or much higher effect uh, uh, Rather, uh, from any other frequency so if we drive so we have a system with transition frequency omega 0 so if we drive the system with a frequency omega this frequency and we drive with another frequency of this so for this so suppose this is omega 1 and this is omega 2 so the transition probability corresponding to this frequency will be very very high compared to transition probability corresponding to this frequency so that is why uh, we are considering uh, or we are restricting our attention to the frequency which is very close to the transition frequency so now if we drop our first term uh, from the equation because we we already know that our second term dominates so if we drop that then what we will have then we will have cbt to be almost equal to minus vba By two h cut, and we have here e to the power i. So we will apply some simple mathematics here. So i omega zero minus omega t by two, and we have in the denominator as omega zero minus omega. So what we will have here? We have here i omega zero minus omega. T by two, and we have minus e to the power i omega zero minus omega t by two, so it will be minus. So what we will get? So if we uh, uh, here add two i, so we will have uh, also have to multiply the whole equation with two i. So if we do this, this two will cancel out, and we are left with C B T. Which will be equal to minus i v b a by h cut, and here we will have terms. So this will be our sine is sine function. So sine omega zero minus omega t by two. So this is our sine term, and it will be divided by omega zero minus omega. Uh, so this is our c b t. so if we uh, uh, now if we and we have here e to the power i omega 0 minus omega t by 2 so now if we want to calculate the transition probability then what we will have to do so the the transition probability means finding the particle in the uh, uh, upper state at a later time then it will be like we will denote this transition probability like this so transition from a to b so this at any time will be cbt squared value that means what what will be the value so it will be vba by h cut square and we have vba squared and uh, here we will have sin 
omega 0 minus omega t by 2 squared divided by omega 0 minus omega squared and this exponential term so we have to take its complex conjugate and if we multiply this uh, so this is basically cbt cbt prime star so cbt cbt prime will uh, will uh, contain the complex conjugate of this term and if we multiply them so it it will be one so this is our corresponding transition probability so like if we want to plot this so what will be its function look like so this is our transition probability probability from a to b and in this limit uh, in this axis we have our time axis so when it will be uh, so if we uh, look carefully so we have to calculate it's how it's look like so uh, this is basically a sine squared function so if we look carefully that p a b t so it is basically a constant multiplied with sine squared another constant so let us denote this by like capital b and we have t here so uh, so what will be the value of this probability maximum value will be a so here maximum value we have b b a squared by h cut squared into omega 0 minus omega squared so and this is sine sine squared function so this will oscillate so we will have our graph of this kind and what will be the maximum value this maximum value is b b a or b a b by h cut omega 0 minus omega squared so this is our maximum value and what will be the time corresponding to the maximum value so like wh whenever we have omega 0 minus omega t by 2 this will be equal to 2n plus 1 pi by 2 so like whenever pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 5 by pi by 2 we have this maximum value so it will give us t to be 2n plus 1 pi by omega 0 minus omega so this maximum value is corresponding to so this is like time for pi by omega 0 minus omega this is for uh, 3 pi omega 0 minus omega this is for 5 pi and so on And what is this value so for for this value or when, whenever we have minimum so that omega 0 minus omega t by 2 that needs to be m pi so that means we have our t to be 2 m pi by omega 0 minus omega so that so that that time it is 2 pi by omega 0 minus omega that is uh, 4 pi omega 0 minus omega that is 6 pi by omega 0 minus omega and so on so so you can see that our transition probability oscillates so that means like this is our system at initial time and we uh, we uh, we apply a perturbative hamiltonian which has sinusoidal kind of perturbation sinusoidal time dependence so if we measure at a certain time so suppose we measure at this time 2 pi by omega 0 minus omega so if, if, if we do our measurement after this so then we have maximum probability of finding the system in the excited state and after that uh, the probability of finding the system in the excited state will decay down and if we uh, measure at at a time in at a time given by this so if we measure uh, uh, we apply the perturbation and after this time we are measuring what the system is then we have maximum probability of finding the system in the ground state because the transition probability is now minimum so uh, and in this way if we measure at these timestamps so there is maximum probability that the, that the system will be in the ground state but to, if we measure at timestamps which is defined by this so in these timestamps if, if we measure 
we have a maximum probability of finding the system in the upper excited states so uh, what we have to do if we want to uh, transit the system in the upper state so uh, so if if we keep applying the perturbation then the system will not be able to uh, be stable on the upper excited state so uh, uh, because it 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 will oscillate continuously so what what we can do so if we want to maximize our chance of provoking a transition then uh, like we like we have to then we can say we can turn our perturbation after a period of uh, this so up, after this time suppose we uh, stop our perturbation then we have our uh, maximum probability of uh, provoking a transition so uh, so this is uh, our uh, probability of transition as a function of time if we have our tra transition probability uh, if we have our uh, driving frequency which is very close to the transition frequency now what will be this transition probability uh, look like with the function of omega so we want to show see how this transition probability depend on omega so if if we uh, if if we take the equation and plot the uh, plot the graph then we we can see like then we will have a graph of this kind where this is this peak corresponding to omega equal to omega 0 and uh, this is for omega equal to omega 0 minus 2 pi by t and this is uh, corresponding to omega 0 plus 2 pi by t so and and this peak this peak will have a height will have a height of V A B multiplied with T by 2 H cut and whole square. So this will uh, so this is how our transition probability will look like as a function of uh, omega and uh, what will be the width and this width it is so that means we have to uh, take the difference of these two so our width width will be four pi by t so that means as our time goes on uh, so uh, then our uh, uh, this width it will remain it it will start to narrow down and our height so it will start to increase so uh, so uh, if if we look carefully uh, then the maximum here it is increasing without limit however uh, so this is our result what we get from our perturbation theory but uh, we uh, for perturbation theory we assume that our uh, our hamiltonian or our perturbative hamiltonian value has to be smaller than, than our original or unperturbed hamiltonian but in this way if if our height keep on in increasing then our assumption breaks down before it uh, like it get, get, get close to one so uh, we can believe the result only for relatively small t so uh, th this is how we treat our part uh, this is how treat our transition probability according to perturbation theory now uh, now uh, in, in the next problem, uh, in, in a problem, we will see how we, we can deal with the uh, exact case. So, uh, let us proceed. <coughs> so, uh, this is the problem uh, that we are going to solve. So, the problem states that the first term in equation uh, 925. So, basically, uh, I am following the textbook Griffiths and this is uh, this is which is defined as equation 925 so this is basically the expression of cbt without uh, uh, neglecting the first term so so the first term uh, it is stating that comes out from the to the power i omega t by 2 part of cosine and second term is coming from this so thus uh, thus dropping the first term is formally equivalent to uh, writing 
our partitive hamiltonian as this so if we, if our partitive hamiltonian in this then we can write vba and vab in this form obviously so uh, so uh, like rabi noticed that if we make this so called rotary wave appro approximation so this is called rotating wave approximation if we consider this at the beginning of calculation equation 930 so uh, that equation is basically uh, uh, that uh, c a t dot and c b t dot up to first order so uh, if if we uh, consider hamiltonian to be this and then our equation that equation can be solved exactly with no need for perturbation theory and no assumption about the strength of the field so we have to solve equation that that equation in the rotating wave ap approximation that means we have to consider our hamiltonian partitive hamiltonian as this so for initial condition usual initial condition that means in initially the system is in ground state so we have to express uh, our result c a and c b t in terms of this this defined frequency which is known as rabi flopping frequency so let us proceed so if if we have our hamiltonian to be this then we can write our cat and cbt like this so cat prime will be minus i by 2 h cut vab e to the power i omega t and we have here e to the power minus i omega 0 t cb and also cb T that can be write as minus i by two h cut v b a e to the power minus i omega t e to the power i omega zero t c a because we know that our c a t is defined as minus i by h cut h a b prime e to the power minus i omega 0 t c b and our c b t that is defined as minus i by h cut h b a prime e to the power minus i omega 0 uh, that that will be plus i plus i omega 0 t c a so we have to solve this two equation so uh, for that uh, what we can do so let us first so uh, first di uh, di differentiate the letter and substitute this in the format so let us uh, calculate c b t double prime so what will be c c b t double prime it will be minus i v b a by 2 h cut and here we have we have to differentiate this so i omega 0 minus omega and we will have e to the power i omega 0 minus omega t and we have ca plus we have to uh, now differentiate this term so we will have plus e to the power i omega 0 minus omega t ca dot but we already know our ca dot so we can substitute this here that ca dot so if we do that we will get Minus i omega zero minus omega minus i. So just we have to do the mathematics. B a by two h cut, and here we will have e to the power i omega zero minus omega t c a. So uh, this is our uh, like uh, first term, and from the second one we will get. Minus i v b a by two h cut, and we have here e to the power i omega zero minus omega t multiplied with minus i v a b by two h cut e to the power minus i omega zero minus omega t c b. So we have just substituted that c a prime. Uh, uh, or that C A derivative with this. So by doing that, we are getting this. 
so this will give us if we do uh, if we simplify this we will get i omega 0 minus omega c b prime minus v a b squared by 2 h card squared c b so what uh, so what we will get we will get d2 cb dt square plus i omega 0 minus omega dcb dt plus vab squared by 2h cut squared and it will be multiplied with cb so that is our uh, equation so if we assume uh, our solution of this equation so assume cb to be of this form it will be a lambda t so where we don't know uh, don't know our lambda we have to find out our lambda so what you can do we have to substitute this cb here so if we do the substitution what we will get so we will get basically uh, lambda square plus i omega minus omega 0 lambda plus v a b squared by 4 h cut squared is equal to 0. So what will be the solution of this equation? So solution will be half minus i omega minus omega 0 plus minus root under minus omega minus omega 0 squared minus v a b squared by h cut squared. So, but we know that uh, this is defined as our Arabic frequency. So, we can write this as I minus omega minus omega 0 by 2. So, what is our Arabic frequency? Our Arabic frequency is half omega minus omega 0 squared plus VAB squared by H squared squared. So, uh, basically, we, we, we have to just take here an i common so if we take an i out here so it it will give us this this will be plus and this with this two it will be our rabbi frequency so we will have plus minus our rabbi frequency so what will be the general solution so the general solution will be cbt a e to the power i minus omega minus omega 0 by 2 plus omega r t this is 1 and another factor will be e to the power i minus omega minus omega 0 by 2 and it will be minus So this is our uh, CBT. So if we take this term common like e to the power uh, minus i omega minus omega 0 by t by 2 if we take this term common so we will have here a e to the power i omega rt plus b e to the power minus i omega rt or more conveniently if we want to write that we can write this as e to the power minus i omega minus omega 0 t by 2 and here we will have like c cosine of omega t plus d sine of omega t but what is our initial condition so we are given that c b at time t equal to 0 is 0 so if we put our time t 0 then we will have this term 1 and this is c plus d multiplied with 0 so this imply our c to be 0 so our cbt will be d e to the power minus i omega minus omega 0 t by 2 sin omega r t and uh, in the similar manner in the similar fashion if we proceed with our CA so if we do the calculation and put our initial condition then 
you will end up with so you can do it easily so you have to do in the same manner so now we have to like for calculating cb we are we have defined the second derivative so for for to calculate ca so we have to calculate we have to take derivative of this and we have to replace the cb derivative with this term so if we do this and uh, again doing this kind of assumption and putting initial condition then we will end up with a cat to be e to the power i omega minus omega 0 t by 2 cosine of omega rt plus i omega 0 minus omega divided by 2 omega r sine omega rt so this is our first uh, so we are done with the first part of the problem so we have solved that ca cat and cbt exactly by considering this uh, rotating wave approximation so now we have to determine the transition probability and uh, we have to show that it never exits one and we have to check this so let us proceed so what is transition probability a to b transition probability we know is defined as cbt squared so this will give us so we have to uh, calculate this uh, d term also uh, so to, to to do this what we should do uh, so we, we so before proceeding first we have to uh, our, our calculate our d term so uh, let us do that we know that cbt is this d e to the power minus i omega minus omega 0 t by 2 sin omega rt so our cb derivative it will give us d i omega 0 minus omega by 2 e to the power i omega 0 minus omega t by 2 sin omega t plus omega r e to the power i omega 0 minus omega t by 2 and we have here cosine omega r t but we know our cat is i by 2 h cut v b a e to the so in this way we can calculate our c c a t easily so if we if we put our c b t here so we will get our c a t to be i 2 h cut by v b a d and we have here i omega 0 minus omega by 2 sin omega r t plus omega r cosine omega r t so so in so now we know that uh, this is our c a t so c a at time t equal to 0 is 1 so if we put that so we will end up with 1 will be equal to i 2 h cut by v b a d omega r so we will get our d to be minus i v b a 2 h cut by omega so in that way we, we, we can calculate d like we, we have found out our c b and we know that c a and c b are interlinked so we can calculate that one uh, uh, arbitrary constant from the CA condition. So in this way we can calculate uh, D. So what is our CBT? So finally our CBT comes out to be I by 2 H cut omega R P B A e to the power I omega 0 minus omega T by 2 sin omega R T. So what will be our transition probability? So transition probability is basically the squared of this term. So or uh, uh, CBT product with its complex conjugate. So this will give us VBA by 2H cut omega R that squared of this value 
एंड वी हैव साइन स्क्वायर ओमेगा आर टी सो दिस इज आवर ट्रांजिशन प्रोबेबिलिटी एंड वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट अगेन सी ए स्क्वायर प्लस सी बी स्क्वायर एंड सो वन सो इफ वी नोटिस केयरफुली दैट दिस ट्रांजिशन प्रोबेबिलिटी द लार्जेस्ट दिस द लार्जेस्ट वैल्यू इट ऑफ दिस कैन बी वी बी ए स्क्वायर by h cut squared by 4 omega r square and we know that this 4 omega r square this is omega minus omega 0 square plus v ab square by h cut square so we can clearly say that this term like uh, uh, this denominator this uh, always exceeds the numerator so we will always have our transition probability at any time to be less than 1 and when it will be 1 it will be 1 if and only if we have our transition frequency to be equal to our driving frequency and now we have to calculate that c a squared plus c b squared so what will be this so c b squared we know uh, we found out to be v a b or uh, like uh, v a b by 2 h cut omega r squared sin squared omega r t and our c a squared if we calculate in the similar way it will be cosine squared omega r t Plus omega zero minus omega squared by two omega r squared, and we will have sine squared omega r t. So if we do, uh, if we, if we simplify this, then we will get cosine squared omega r t plus omega minus omega naught squared plus v a b by h cut squared. and in the denominator we have 4 omega r squared but this is but this is precisely what 4 omega square uh, uh, 4 omega r squared are. so uh, and we have here sin squared omega t so this term it will give us 1 so if it give us 1 so we will have cosine square omega r t plus sin squared omega r t so our this value will be 1 so we are done with the second part also so let us pro proceed to the third so it states that check the probability reduces to the perturbation theory result uh, what we have obtained when the perturbation is small and the state uh, pre and state precisely what small means in this context as a constant on v so let us see so we uh, uh, we found out our transition probability to be vab by 2 h cut omega r squared sin squared omega r t now if we have our vab squared that is very small compared to h cut h cut square omega minus omega 0 square so if we have this condition then what we will get then our omega r it will be almost equal to half omega minus omega 0 so if that is the case then what will be our transition probability then our transition probability will be v a b square divided by h cut square and we have 2 omega r so 2 omega r, r will give us omega minus omega 0 so squared of this term and here we have sin squared omega minus omega 0 by 2 multiplied with t so this is precisely our result so here small perturbation means uh, the uh, uh, so this is the condition for small perturbation
and now we have to uh, show at what time does the system final uh, first return to initial state so first uh, return to initial state means what so that means our transition probability will be zero So transition probability zero can when can happen? So when you have omega t to be pi, two pi, three pi, and so on, like m pi. So you have to calculate the first instance. So for first instance, so here if this omega r is pi, so this time will be zero. So for first in instance, we have our omega r t to be pi. So the time will be pi by omega r. So after this time. The system will first return to its initial state. Okay, so that is it for uh, today's video. So uh, we will meet on our next lecture video. Thank you.